number one player tom cousins is out there and this is the start of the second round the winners round one as it is in double elimination play both tom and gary carr have already come through the first round both have very tough matches i'll get into that in a minute but they're back out there to get their second round matches played winner of this will be safely through and work done for the day the loser will have to play in the losers round later on tonight race to 10 as it is in the winner's side all the way through 70 minutes on that match clock and it is top cat with the first opportunity and i've got greg batten in the commentary box with me greg great to see you always a fun one you can join us in in comms yeah thanks simon yeah pleasure to be here and uh yeah looking forward to this match tom was pushed very hard in the first round I think he was 4-1 down and behind pretty much all the way. I think 8-7 at one point and then ended up winning 10-8 to get the job done over Darren Hope. Gary Carr was in a bit of a slugfest with Callum Singleton all the way through. Ended up deciding frame victory for Gary. Yeah, it's a very good win for, for both, actually, because Darren is a very accomplished player. I think he plays up with... Uh, up around John Rose neck of the woods, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, so actually this could promises to be a very good match because they've both come through struggles in their first round. And already Tom has developed this into a very good chance to take the first frame after what looked like a pretty poor break, but not through Tom's error. I think maybe there was either a bit of chalk on one of the front balls or weren't quite racked correctly. The refs obviously do a fantastic job, do their best to make sure every ball's touching. But uh, it's going to take more than that to stop Top Cat by the looks of it. Yeah, I think sometimes in a tournament, especially for, you know, one of the big favourites, it's, you know, you kind of got to get yourself into the tournament and maybe caught a little bit cold earlier on because we didn't see the match, we can't really say. And obviously Darren's a very good player, but now he's come through that, you know, he's nicely warmed up here i actually expect tom to play really well here but i expect gary to play well as well. well of course the beauty of it is you've come through your first round and you're still in that lovely position where you are free rolling you know you know that uh, the worst that happens you lose you're still in the event so for someone as good as tom is this is yeah, the perfect place to be yeah double elimination if you are just joining us all the way to the last 16 when we go down to the single elimination, so the eight qualifiers through the winner's side will take on eight qualifiers through the loser's side, and then it's single elimination straight race from there. And the loser's side, I believe, is race to seven. seven. Yeah, so yeah. still a good race in the loser's side. Does that give you a little bit of freedom as a player coming in, sort of having that knowledge? Well, I think so. I mean, if it was race to five, then um, with the rules and, and everything else, it's a lot more cutthroat seven is still that's the same match uh, length that we play on the tour event so you feel like you're in a, a decent race and uh, for the most part the best player should come through but uh, that's a, a rare error there from tom yeah left himself just no way of getting on that last yellow couldn't get across to the right hand side of the table we will say how important the first frames are in these matches gary is uh, as you can see there getting his hands dried and he's anticipating coming back to the table never count this man off though he may find something just like that brilliant shot from tom cousins and the towel's gone back down on the table <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Gary. tap of the knee as well just yeah. to say well done phenomenal shot yeah brilliant stuff from tom putting himself in a world of trouble but one of his best assets, I think, though, is, you know, he's played a, a poor shot by his standards, but he's not, hands weren't in the air, he wasn't, you know, uh, moaning or whinging about anything. He just looked at the, the next shot and got on with it. Huge break from Carrie. Wow. Oh, wow. I'd like to get them every time if you could. Goodness me. Just wondering if the yellow at the bottom passes the gap of the reds, and then if it does, then yellows are... I wouldn't say routine, but they're very good. Yeah, I think you've answered that question, or Gary's answered it with that yeah. first shot. So it looks like it does go. Just needs to leave himself half ball if he can. And he's 
a bit too straight from the looks of that angle. Yeah, a slightly strange one. You just have to hold the cue ball there. Yeah, but the good thing about this table is the fact that it's new. You can manipulate things a little bit. He's not quite got there, but will it cut? It's to okay. This is the first time out there on this arena table for for Gary, so you might see him get caught out a little bit on the cushions and that sort of shot here and there. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's his first time on the table. It does play differently than the uh, tables in the back room. If you haven't played on it before, then... Uh, I mean, we heard Luke Gilbert in his interview just saying um, how difficult he found the table, and that's somebody that's played on it many times. So for Gary, this is uh, a challenge. Not only is he playing the arguably the best player in the world, he's also up against uh, a new table. Yeah, important for him to get the feel for it as quickly as he possibly can. We actually saw Matty Challen in a similar position a little bit earlier on, and it took him a little while to get going. But once he found the table, he already found the touch. So the beauty of having a longer match for Gary is that he will have that time to kind of get the feel. And you feel he will get enough chances to establish himself in the match, but won't really be able to give away too many of those sort of chances because that really was a an unbelievable break. I know from my own experience of playing on this table, uh, I found that if you are confident, if you are queuing nicely, then it's the best table out there to play on um, because you can ma manipulate the white ball, you can do things with ease. But if you are nervous, slightly tight on your queuing, uh, under pressure in any way, then it can catch you out. Get the sense that Tom's still just trying to feel it out there with the cue ball as well. That's what cost him in the opening frame. I know he came up with a big shot to complete the finish, but he wasn't trying to leave that angle on the previous shot and tried to force it to the top right corner of the table. A touch thinner here than he wanted. I mean, shouldn't still be a, a problem for him. No, nicely done. But no, I think you're right. He's... Uh he is struggling a little bit with the conditions. Of course, the tables were all redone prior to this event, which is uh, what we all want. Um, maybe if he had the mentality of other players that we that we know, he uh, he may have done more. But obviously, all of that's hindsight. The fact is, he is a phenomenal player. Brilliant break here for Tom. But just to respond to that, I think. I think you're right, and I think Tom will be the first to admit that he can he can get lazy with his practice at times. I actually think one of the things that will can help Tom more than anything else is a, a really hungry Sean Story, because it kind of Sean will kind of almost force him to have to practice, because you know he'll badger him for those practice sessions, which obviously benefits Sean a huge amount, but also benefits Tom Cousins. I mean, there was no there was no surprise or secret into how Tom rediscovered his form. It was through hard work on the on the practice table. Is he? Are they still doing that? Are they still practicing twice a week? I think they're they're back practicing a, a lot more. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a obviously uh, a period where they weren't practicing practicing as much. Sort of middle back end of last year. But I think they are back on it now. Uh, clearly, that's the key because, uh, as we know, Sean is a fantastic player, one of the best in the world. He won earlier, of course, ten three, so a comfortable win for Sean. And uh, as you say, it keeps keeps Tom on his toes. You know, playing. Somebody as good as Sean twice, three times a week, every week is uh, is the key to his form and what he's done, I would imagine. That's the other thing with Tom, you know, he does get an enormous amount of this type of layout because of the power and the accuracy of his break. It just makes things so much easier for him. And I think out of every other player, if you looked at it, if you had the... Uh, technology to see he would be the player that got the most of that type of layout from a break no oh, cue ball this time yeah if we watch the replay of this break his head came up pretty quickly and uh, yeah your eyesight isn't then in line with what you're doing and he only takes a little bit of side or just queuing offline, which perhaps he's done there. Just forced the error. And this is not what he wanted to see at 3-0 down with Tom at the table. 
Yeah, Gary, a, a very confident player from Malta. Seen him play at a really high level. Plays a, a, the game in Malta is so big, and they play in so many big tournaments there and for his country. Uh, I do expect him to find his game, but the problem is he might have to try and do that from 4-0 and possibly even 5-0 down, the way that Tom's hit the first two breaks. Yeah, and as we know, if Tom uh, breaks anything like he can, then a 4-0 deficit is just so difficult to come back from. Any other player, you know, a couple of dry breaks, you're sort of back in it. But with Tom, very, very rarely does he not get a ball off his break. Feels like the key shot in this frame. Just that transition and I'm not sure if he was playing on the gap to bottom left. Don't think he's on that one. He does have left centre. Can either top this in and leave the next red into the bottom left hand pocket or just stun it in and leave the half ball, which I think he's electing. There we go, so we'll just drop the red into the middle now and then leave the last two reds to finish. So it should be very routine for Tom. I say that, he's just okay, I think. Yeah, he's okay, he can see it. All the potting angle anyway. Who is uh, your pick for this event, Simon? Well, I think with the longer races, the deeper races, I think we're going to see an I think we're going to see a couple of qualifiers go really well, but I do think we'll see a, an established player, an established top professional winning the title as he completes the finish to make it 4-0. Let's see if Tom's break continues. It does, but so does the cue ball this time. Now then, Gary, this is your opportunity. He's had one chance in four frames. Yeah, just got airborne on that uh, on that break with a cue ball. And look at these. For Gary, he could not wish for them to be any better to get his first frame on the board. And I hope he does it because this will settle him down. Cannot see him coming back really from 5 0 behind against Tom Cousins, but 4-1 uh, with him to break. Certainly back in the match. Yeah, if we're putting it into that sort of level of match, yeah, 4 1, it, it, the key being that he has the next break. As you can already see, if you haven't seen Gary play before, he's very fluent, gets on with it. Nice rhythm. As Simon said, he is one of the best Maltese players they have. And it looks like in no time at all, we are going to be at 4-1. Yeah, nicely done from Gary. Needed that opportunity, he really did. Needs a ball, gets a ball, gets a couple, doesn't have a good starter. Oh, we'd love an opening red here. Yeah, does he risk playing the cut first shot? Oh, he's down on it straight away. It's a good pot, but that's where the good news on this shot ends. Yeah. Was always relying on a bit of luck there and... Uh, I asked the question, did he risk the cut? But I didn't think he was just going to get down and play it before at least having a look at where things were going to go and, you know, the cannon. Pulls back, he had no choice but to pull back there, nothing aggressive on at all. 
now and at first glance doesn't look to have done too much damage unless Tom can see a little bit of this uh, yellow of the two. If he can, then he can play screw back and try and get in behind the other two yellows. And that's what he's done, but he has left a pot up to the top, I think. Maybe only half a pocket. He'll be pleased to see that red drop yeah. as a loss of turn because it means there isn't one over the pocket. Straight down again, quick. Can I play it off the red? No, oh, he's got the fluke. There we go. That will <laughs> do. He's got a gap here to the one by the eight ball, so he does have a next ball. Not a good angle. But yeah, and I think actually the natural is in off, so he may have to dig down on this to force it wider. Instead, he's gone for the double. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, with only three reds left, Tom will be licking his lips now. Anytime you've got uh, one or more balls than your opponent, you are in command. And you have a lot more options. First shot for Tom will be yellow bottom left and to try and dislodge the yellow closest to the cushion. Oh, can he see the one yeah, in the bottom long, end of the table? As long as it hasn't stuck, he's fine, but has it? He's okay. Body yeah. language looks good. Would prefer to play this yellow on its own, get that out of the way, and then he can uh, work on the three and the uh, yellow on the right-hand side. As a, as a player, you always try and finish your areas if you can and that's what Tom will do now far easier to uh, manipulate the cue ball in one half of the table than it is to come back up and down and across and here there and everywhere I think he's just finished between shots here trying to make his mind up which way to go Showing how comfortable he's got with the, the shot clock. Still walking around the table with four seconds to go. I sometimes think that the clock can actually benefit you because it made Tom's decision for him in the end. And uh, he had to just get down and play the shot. So nicely, just uh, a little stun across the table now. And uh, should be 5 1 to Tom. Not sure how far into the match we are in terms of minutes, Simon. No, we're just coming up to 20. Well, yeah. we're 17 minutes in now, just over. So, very, very quick. Yeah, another one off the break for. Well, it's not off the break. Sorry, it's uh, stepping in on, on Gary, not uh, making the most of his good fortune and the fluke. You saw there some of the results from quarter two, the second section of the draw. Phil Harrison, top seed in that section, and obviously a very eye-catching 10-0 opening victory. One thing I've noticed is Tom is not timing his break quite as well. And again, look, airborne off that front red, so he'll have to look at that for his next game. Yeah, catching it on the hop. He's taking a little bit of the sting out of it. Reminds me of a Jimmy Croxton break, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> He'll be pleased to know that. One ball to work out here for Gary. I think it's worth playing a quality little delicate positional shot. Yeah, I just feel like Gary is rushing just a tad. Well, I thought he could just stun that and just finish above the reds and have it in right centre. A bit like he's played for there without having to move anything originally but he's played that one well yeah he has played that one nicely it's always difficult to know isn't it for a quick player are they are they playing too quickly because they're not you know i've seen gary play enough times to know he's obviously a very very good player but also he's an incredibly quick player that's how he naturally goes about it but there was a shot earlier on wasn't there where he had to play a really 
difficult cut into the middle and and not much clue what was going on with the cue ball and he was down on it almost instantly. Yeah, it sort of reminds me a little bit of Luca Brassell from the snooker. He's clearly got an awful lot of talent and just occasionally a little bit loose. And what does he do here? Must off, have been playing off the eight that, ball? Yeah, must have been playing for that in right centre and he's finished absolutely nowhere. I think given the benefit of the doubt in terms of the table is probably catching him out a little bit. Slides so much more than probably what he's used to. But uh, wow, this is risky. He probably knows that uh, the writing is almost on the wall already. Looks a little bit resigned in his chair. And we know that Tom will not be making any mistakes from this position. Only has to play one cannon now, develop that awkward red, and we're very shortly going to be at 6 1. Yeah, all too easy at the moment for Tom. Floats round effortlessly, takes his time, very easy on the eye. It's the casual nature, isn't it? Just yeah. chalk on the table. Sort of Mark Williams style, laid yeah. back, just floats everything in, yeah. lovely. Another error punished, another frame to Tom Cousins. Second side. Just not quite hitting those flush. And uh, that leaves what looks on the face of it a relatively comfortable opportunity for Tom. Just needs to play this thin into the pocket with side. Get the cannon on the red. Did get the cannon, but unfortunately just too thin. Wanted to get a fuller contact so that he could be on the yellow to the bottom left. Just going to have to reroute here. And what he'll be looking to do is try and place the cue ball in a position where he can pot his next yellow and play that cannon. error from Tom Cousins mark that down it's funny because even though he is 6-1 up he, he, to me he doesn't look comfortable he doesn't look quite the Tom Cousins we know you know so I don't know I know what you're saying but I was thinking that a minute ago but I was thinking he's every time he's gone for a finish he's cleared up I think there was only one safety shot the rest have been clearances yeah but <laughs> maybe it's the fact that he knows that you know that the he's not being punished and uh, perhaps he's not quite fully focused that, that could be could be a reason. With Gary's style of play, I would imagine that when he's on, he's absolutely phenomenal. However, you know, if he's not quite at his best, then you, you will get a lot of chances, um, as we've seen in this match so far. Definitely been the case in, in this one. Double, cut, yeah, nicely done. Got to screw across the face of the red, which he has done. And that's no good because 
he's landed pretty much straight so lots of side need to be imparted reverse side and as the yellow has impeded him into one pocket can he cut this into the top left he probably can but again he needs to try and soft screw oh it did go in the right hand pocket that's a bonus is he on this one it's tight you might have to turn it and also does the eight ball go I think he's happy with the red because he's eyeing up the eight ball can't do a lot with this oh, oh, he hit no. the yellow that's another one that's going to get away from him this is going to be seven one in a heartbeat you feel yeah it's just been too many errors unfortunately from from Gary understandable what we've already said about uh, his first time on this main stage not used to the conditions perhaps he has played on Ultimate Pool TV before. He's been playing for Malta and played in the shootouts. So it's kind of the fast na paced nature and stuff like that. But it's more the the table that we're referring to. Struggling, you feel, to get used to the the way the cue ball's reacting. And if you can't quite put the cue ball where you're trying to, it becomes a very difficult game. Always feel like you're guessing all the time, aren't you? You just don't quite know where it's going to end up. Yeah. And obviously then that magnifies with every mistake you make. Second guessing yourself at the next time you go to the table. the way of top cat Let's see what happens this time it sounded like a better hit and it was quite still quite a bit of side on the break there on the cue ball but yeah not the contact he wa would have wanted it's uh, gone onto the left hand cushion but he certainly got a lot more power into it He's very technical with his uh, with his break. If you ever ask him what he does, he's been known to say, "I just hit him as hard as I can." <laughs> there so is more to it than that. I'm he sure likes there to is. keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, the secret he keeps to himself, I think. Good layout. This he's a little bit annoyed to be hampered here, but he's quite a tall player, so actually it's not as bad as it would be for others, myself included. Just a bit of a stretch for Tom. And the red that's in the triangle area by the eight ball does go through the gap to bottom right. So everything does have pockets here. Yeah, he's just one shot away now. As long as he can get position from this red, he should be absolutely fine. It's a thin one, so he does need to make sure he's okay here. Probably see him come into the center of the table along that line. There we go. Now he's got choices. Can I either top this in or screw it back? Can't do a lot with this one. I think he'll either play it with a little bit of stun yeah there we go just take his medicine and rely on his good cue ball here and queuing this isn't the hardest shot for someone like Tom just below centre striking one cushion back up the table track towards that sort of middle pocket line there we go and uh, that is 8-1 coming up Gary will be in his chair, resigned really, I think, to the fact that he's going to lose this match. Tough loss for him. But I say all these rounds at this stage is going into the loser side of the draw, so everyone has a second opportunity tonight to get themselves going in the tournament. Red ball. 
rules in play. Red balls chosen. And, uh, very nicely done there if he's played that shot off the red. Play another one now off the uh, other red. Pop this one and play the cannon onto the yellow. And all of his work is done now, pretty much. Just needs to uh, pick the route. And he should be fine. Just screw this one into the middle and try and leave the next red straight or as straight as you can. He's not quite perfect, but he should be able just to just drop this one in dead weight. Yeah, nicely done. Leaving the eight ball up the top. And uh, theoretically, there is plenty of time for Gary to get back into this match and still win it. But uh, uh, as we know, 8-2 behind against most players is going to be a very big task. One of the new professionals this year, Ryan Lambeth, who's having a pretty good season already. Had some good results in the last tour event. He's uh, won his first round earlier on today and is currently 2-0 up against uh, Rob Warren, I believe. Uh, Dave McNamara. Sorry, Dave McNamara. Yeah, the graphic so. was dropped before. <laughs> yeah. But that just shows that uh, he's doing very well. Very confident player. We saw that on the Champions League recently. Yeah, very good performance from, from Ryan. Started his pro career very well. And the faintest bit of hope here for Gary. Because it's an in-off break from Tom Cousins and a beautiful layout. Eight ball needs a little bit of attention but in the perfect position really for a double if he doesn't want to try and drop it in delicately into the right centre yeah Gary would wish he could have started the match like this completely relaxed with no expectations and uh, free flowing has he come back far enough I don't think he has maybe he's okay just and he does have the angle to track behind the eight ball or move the eight ball let's track behind it it is yeah nicely done from Gary just this eight ball for another one pulled back um, and it almost becomes enjoyable if you can get to that stage but um, you do need everything to go your way and you also need a dip from your opponent and unfortunately as we've said that we've seen a dry break from Gary and these yellows I believe look well he, all the reds look absolutely perfect for Tom so he could go either way here yeah yeah and that's for me I think that's the best that Gary's hit the break in the match as well he absolutely flushed that yeah not rewarded that time Tom decides to go reds and uh, providing he can uh, manage the areas I don't really see much of a problem here probably wants to get the red top left hand side out the way as early as he can so he's played on that now once he gets that out of the way, then it's pretty plain sailing. himself really I mean he's been in perfect shape just all the way through this it was such a beautiful layout for him frustration for for Gary because after taking back-to-back -back frames off the break he's 
thinking, you know, he'd have seen this layout. If only he could have made a ball, this could have been his and really ramp the pressure up onto Tom's next break. Nicely done from Tom Cousins with time to spare. And that was the best break that he's hit all match. Took a little bit off that one, and you saw the difference in terms of the control. Cue ball straight up the centre of the table, and rewarded with a yellow going in. And this looks like a nice finish for Tom already. If he can find a red. Cutback looks to be the best ball. Nothing he could do there, he had to cannon into the yellows. But it seems to have worked out nicely. Tom does go on and complete victory at this visit. It would be really interesting to know how he feels about this performance because it, it's low key being excellent. I mean, we can point at what, one mistake in the whole match? Um, two, but one of them didn't cost him because he made the pot from the snooker, so you can't really get too critical there. But maybe one you know, one missed ball. Or other than that, he'd been pretty much flawless. But it doesn't feel like a flawless performance is what we're getting at. Well, it doesn't he, feel... It feels like there's, there's room to grow. Oh, and there is. But Tom is deceptively good, isn't he? He can... Without doing anything, really, he's, he's won this... At Cantor, and as you say, maybe only made one or two mistakes. The thing he'll probably be looking at is his break, to be honest. I think he'll uh, want to try and figure that out. If he gets that working, then uh, everyone else is in trouble because we know he's got the gears. And for Gary, this is a experience, a learning experience. He'll take this into his next match and probably perform a lot better. That's it, he's not out, he's got another chance. Into the loser's side, he will go if Tom Cousins can complete the job with this eight ball. He'll never in doubt for the number one player. Tom Cousins marches through to tomorrow. He's into winner's round two. He'll be back in the morning at 10 a.m. to continue his tilt at the title here at the British Open. Gary Carr moves into the loser's round.